What's up everyone? Today we're going to be talking about a book written by Ellen DeGeneres. It was recently released a couple years ago. It's called Seriously I'm Kidding. It's her third book and this one's the most relevant because this was written after she got all the fame on her talk show. She went on American Idol and did a bunch of things. So I'm almost done the book and she does a chapter on happiness. In fact, it's a fairly short chapter but it hits a lot of how she thinks about it and her principles on this and she doesn't claim to be a expert or someone who truly understands what she's saying um, and in fact she prefaces this chapter by telling you that she says I'm not an authority on this but I'd like to give you my opinion so the book's written in a way where it's very light humored um, a lot of jokes and a lot of very informal kind of bizarre unnecessary chapters and most of the chapters are very very quick but this one she I guess she finally takes a serious stance for the most part on this topic and tells you what her opinions on this is and I'm excited to share with you uh, what she had to say and before I get to that I really do think that this book was um, surprisingly satisfying because it was a bit of a long shot me picking this up. Um, I think interviewing people is quite an interesting occupation as, as well as talk show host. It seems like a pretty fun thing to do. And Ellen has managed to uh, get very financially wealthy doing something she loves and still stay a very uh, respectable, honest, happy person who has this vibrant vibrant personality and just walks into the room and lights it up and just is like an amazing person to everyone so that's what I say I want to say about that and I guess another interesting fact is that she also kind of reveals what a talk show host is like briefly and it's not as easy as you might think it's a lot of hard work as well so let's get to it um what is this about happiness so this is what she has to say about this subject she pretty much says that uh, happiness should come from within it's an interesting perspective and basically she says she gives a great analogy to really bring this point home she says if you take away your family your friends your toys your possessions your cars your house everything and you're just alone in yourself and you're in this cave and there's nothing but you you can still get happiness from that and that's truly the foundation of happiness so she's saying that this is some level of inner happiness that uh, is not dependent on these outer things and she also mentions a big thing that she always follows which is she's always positive she surrounds herself with positive people she avoids negative people and she, long story short, um, removes any negative thoughts or negative feelings that come her way. And she says it's helped her, at least her along her journey. And on top of that, you know, that's how she's done everything. And apparently she's read a lot of books and consulted with a lot of reputable people on the subject so it's, it's very fascinating and I mean one could argue you couldn't have gotten anything better it's like um, the next best thing to actually being able to meet her one-on-one -on -one and ask her is some level of medium where she's telling you exactly how she achieves happiness which is uh, very interesting like if it wasn't for the power of books you know some of these topics may not ever have been addressed or answered and that's one of the things I always wanted to know of the many things I wanted to know which is um, Ellen DeGeneres' perspective on this uh, you know this book really reminds me of another book I read uh, it's Oprah's book things I know for sure which was released a couple months ago um, arguably like they're good in different ways I would lean towards Ellen's book though um, and as far as Oprah's book goes she doesn't really address happiness straight on I don't think like 
Ellen did, if it if she did, it just didn't stick in my mind. Like, I feel like she addresses parts of things that you should enjoy indirectly. She goes in Oprah's book. She goes on a lot about gratitude and being thankful, and how that's. And she talks about how you know all the little things. She she wakes up and she makes sure to be thankful for, for from um, the cup of coffee she drinks to the food she has on the table and so forth and oftentimes it's kind of like luxurious stuff but also she also is very thankful for a lot of non-luxurious stuff just like being able to walk and observe scenery and so forth so as you might have noticed I do have a little bit of knowledge from actual psychological experiments on topics of happiness which I picked up from a few books myself and from articles and stuff online um, I'm still trying to find more books on that I've on, honestly only read two or three on the topic um, and then maybe three or four that briefly mentioned the topic um, and psych psychological experiments on the topic of happiness as well so it's really not a lot and those books were fairly quick reads and so um, I would say those things are I think it, it gives you a fuller perspective about the psychology of the brain and um, again if you have any suggestions leave a comment below um, but from what I can tell using that knowledge to dissect slightly dissect, I don't want to go too deep, into what Ellen and maybe Oprah mentioned about happiness, I think it's fascinating. You know, the positivity part and just thinking positively, that really hasn't been touched on. So I'm probably going to read a, a new book um, I heard about called Learned Optimism pretty soon. I'm excited for that one. Um, but I'm sure it may have effect. Um, it's good to test out so try that out you know uh, hang around positive people avoiding and eliminating negative thoughts as you uh, upon it creeping into your brain and stay on the positive loop um, I do think one thing I've just noticed naturally and heard from people is that a negative loop will spiral you more and more down so it's kind of like this negative thought breeds more negative thoughts and those negative thoughts just spiral you into more negativity and it's almost like a, something that pushes you down naturally um, the more and more you think about it and the more you think about it the more it pushes you even further down and so um, that may be one reason why you should avoid negative thoughts and stick to positivity now um, I would say I've noticed just based on my upbringing and naturally um, I ended up being around people who I guess were they weren't bad people but they just had negative cycles and that naturally seeped into me and it affected how I I, I thought and so for the last few years I've been trying to rewire myself and I would say for the most part I think I'm better off um, with rewiring my thinking and so keep that in mind you know it's interesting because there's a lot of people who will just hang around anyone and everyone they don't really even consider the topic and so about the other stuff being grateful that's uh, there's plenty of science on that on how just being uh, reminding yourself about being thankful and grateful is very helpful I did a video on that topic alone and uh, what Ellen said about just uh, finding it within yourself, even if you're in ca you're in a cave and all your possessions and everything, your family, your friends are all stripped away from you, and finding happiness in yourself, I would say uh, it's possible for sure, um, and it's something to explore, and it's it's very fascinating. Um, I do want to add on a few things that are related to the topic. Um, certain experiments have shown that certain things add or may be foundational keyword maybe 
they're either foundational or they add to your happiness. One of them being a state of flow and a constant state of work because many of us are wired at a certain age to work. We get some level of happiness from working on a consistent basis. And so because of that, it's like some of us need mental stimulation. Some of us need to just uh, do hard work or something that uh, satisfies our flow, which is work that we uh, is not too difficult but not too easy for us. And that state of flow can in it, it may be a integral part of happiness. So what Ellen's saying about the cold cave thing, I don't know if it's completely true because if you're in that cave locked there, bored out of your mind for a year, say, let alone 10 years, um, will you truly have happiness? For some people, no. They may just, the boredom might just kill them um, or something else. So it's, I guess, partially, like, different people are different. Like, um, I do think that some monks would just meditate that whole time away and be fine with it. So I do think, you know, the, the general message, though, I think it's, it's very useful. And I want to see how far you... And I can take that. I'm going to try it out myself. Um, can how, how far how far of a level of happiness can you achieve if you stripped away all those things? And so, um, you know, there's also a lot of fascinating uh, experiments showing that um, people who are in a lot more traditional environment are a lot more happy or. Uh, there's a, a very low cha low percentage of depression in comparison to um, modern people with television, internet, and so forth. There's this great example of an area in the United States where uh, this one group in the city, modernized, had this high uh, high level of depression, not extremely high, like near average. But um, there was a Amish community like 50 miles, not even 50 miles away. And what an Amish community is, is they've chosen to reject modernization. And so they still live in a very agrarian society, which means uh, there's no like really big electronics, no internet, no electricity. And they do a lot of farming and so forth. And yet their depression rate is like a fifth, of that of this modern city and what this experiment really does is it controls for all the other differences in variations stuff like oh you can't compare those two because the climate's different or uh, the Sun sets at a different time or uh, it's a di in a different area or so forth it's like no they're like pretty much in the same area um, like geographically so it's very fascinating and obviously there's thousands upon thousands of small minor factors that may influence it from economic climate to job opportunities and so forth and if you really crack open the egg it may be a, a much more intricate topic uh, things like how um, if you look at general trends and play, where places people are the most happy um, so many factors may be influenced from weather to traffic conditions to irritability to how much you like your job all these things can play a factor into it um, and so um, it's a very fascinating thing and Ellen's very simplistic and again I'm not saying simplistic is a bad thing it may be very well a good thing or a neutral thing we don't know um, try not to be biased here but um, her her interpretation or not interpretation her like statement on how you can just strip away things and you know happiness comes from within that's her exact words happiness comes from within um, it's a very fascinating thing I do know people who are not ever going to be rich they're making a pretty average to below average wage and they're pretty happy and again perspective plays a huge role some people they almost do it to themselves sometimes without their them knowing of it for instance I'm sure there's people out there who are depressed for trivial I don't want to say trivial trivial but it really is trivial reasons because they're in this rat race 
and they can't get this car or they're not a movie star yet or they're constantly trying to keep up with these people who keep ratcheting up and buying expensive things and are very material um, but then you see these people who are just you know very happy and they're not making that much and another huge thing people fail to realize is that like you know even if you're below average income in the United States that still puts you in the top 1% of income in the world because some people aren't even living off a dollar per month and how do they survive on that dollar well they make it work they, they spread it out and that dollar does bring in more than it would in the United States also so that's a factor but generally they're making a lot less here and they don't really have money for any luxuries and they're happy they could be like they have ragged, raggedy clothes on the street jumping up and down and they could be happy there's people with like their legs chopped off that are fairly happy and people who have like cancer who are fairly happy which gets me to my final thing you know this video is getting way too long um, there's also a uh, what I learned from a recent book is called stumbling upon happiness is that our brains naturally have these mechanisms that sort of distort our perce perception for our own benefit so we're all sort of viewing the world through rose-colored glasses and his argument is that um, there's all these mechanisms and he goes through experiments to show this that make us feel uh, happier than we should in certain situations um, or just for whatever reason make people who would for whatever reason be seemingly depressed because of their horrid condition in life or they went through a traumatic event or they are just not going to live long or they're in a horrible illness that many people would vote worse than death for whatever reason their brains have sort of ratcheted uh, up so that they're pretty they're more content than people would expect uh, having said that though there are people who go through these and they are still very depressed so that's all I gotta say about this topic and again maybe I've dissected it too far um, so my uh, message to you guys is to try some of this out uh, try out what Ellen said not the the rest of the stuff I said uh, let's just keep it simple try out what Ellen said to do and it may help you out I want you to leave in the comments if you have any experiences in your past that may support or reject uh, anything I've said in this video uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say and uh, it's a very interesting topic um, just so just try it out avoid negativity keep positivity around you and with you and finally realize that happiness comes from within um, you know there's so many different types of depression that I've now realized what I mean by that are different causes for sure um, there's so many different reasons it can come about from uh, not getting to where you want in life in terms of a career whether it's an actor or whatever to um, things maybe brought on by family expectations of you or something else or a loss of reputation or a loss of a loved one or um, something else uh, not having uh, certain maybe physical pleasure in your life something that one could l argue is materialistic but there you go you still use it as a reason for depression so there's so many different types and uh, I don't know I'm not an expert at this but just try it out see what if you can it, it, it might help um, you know happiness comes from within um, yeah I do think it is a very interesting thing um, so if you've gone this far in this video I uh, will reward you with my personal story on this very shortly leave a comment below if you actually went through this whole thing I'd be very um, happy to see that you did so if you watch all 20 minutes of this I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tell you a little bit about my own personal struggles just very briefly so 
for me, it was something that one could argue was more trivial. It was this whole thing about um, not having women in my life, or at least um, romantically. And so I guess it was a driver for change, um, but it was also something that I think just naturally evolved. And I don't think it was a uh, wise thing of doing things. Now, if I came from this Ellen frame of it, happiness comes from within, um, you can apply this to my perspective and it can become something like, um, you know, you should be happy on your own. Um, and then woman is just a plus. And so it's not like uh, you need this to be happy. And I do, I do think that's important because um, I've seen quite a few instances where um, people have said that it's, crucial or very important to be independently happy if uh, you're going into a serious relationship. If you depend on that person for your happiness or you depend on um, a, a thing, and I say thing because a lot of people may objectify women or whatever it is, and so that that can just really just, uh, it, it can screw, they're saying you can screw it up if you're not independently happy before the relationship starts. And so um, I do think it's very fascinating because if you look at successful male figures, they're almost always happy just as they are. They're just like awesome, amazing, ridiculous people. They're just like, they just emanate energy oftentimes and they've done amazing things. They're humorous, they're awesome and I can't think of one who's ever been like, oh, I'm so sad because I don't have girls. Like those types of people, they're, they've got it together on the outside with their health, with their grooming, with their fitness, and on the inside with their achievements. And they're not perfect, of course. They're not perfect. But they've gotten enough uh, together in their life that it's just like, boom, it works. And so... Um, you know, these people don't need it, but it comes. And so, there's that. And then at the same time, there's this whole um, thing I'm thinking about where it's like, well, it's partially true, but also I've noticed that some girls are actually, um, they feel it as well. And there's this one, um, she's like a YouTuber, I recently saw her video and she seemed like independently happy and so forth but um, again at the same time she was feeling a little bit you know antsy and frustrated and so forth and maybe a little bit anxious and sad that she didn't have anyone in her life she actually did a whole video advertising herself out there kind of humorously but also serious um, and just saying like oh my goodness such a tragedy and at the same time, I do think part of it is built into how we are as humans to want this because as a female, you have a set biological time period to procreate. So for a female, that may be from early 20s to late 40s or even earlier than that. And so it, it would make a lot of sense for a female to get very anxious or very sad if by that time, she hasn't found a mate and she's just like, you know, all these dreams and expectations of and goals of maybe having a child and so forth, um, it can destroy you. But I do think, again, I do think ultimately, as Ellen has mentioned, you know, despite those obstacles and pains, she says, uh, she says at, at the conclusion of this chapter, no matter the good, the bad, the ugly, the horrible situations that we all face in life, everyone goes through obstacles and pains and problems. Um, you know, you you'll come out of it if you can come out of it, and then just you know realize that happiness comes with from within. Um, you'll come out. Um, you can. You have to realize that you can still come out happy. And so, for that, one could argue ultimately, happiness can still be achieved if you've come to terms. Maybe. Um, you stopped, for a female, you stopped ovulating and you haven't found a mate. I do think with the right mindset and the right perspective, these people can still be happy 
um, and even if like they're 50 or 60 and they never met a man which is more tough to do um, and so that's all I got to say about that uh, and so long story short for my personal story it's not like I didn't meet girls or talk to girls oftentimes it was just looking back you know you forget about it but oftentimes it's just like it didn't work out some quite often it was rejection um, but I, I'm proud to say I did do things to try to meet people so I tried what I could and that in itself I'm proud of um, you tend to forget these things when you uh, you're just so focused on um, I guess results and so uh, it's a very fascinating thing and I'm still on this journey and yeah that's all I gotta say um, see you guys later